Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. How are you doing today? Um, this is going to be a quick little uh, technical uh, after the diagnosis video. I didn't have a chance to really record this one, but I think this is important. Um, there's a lot of cars that work this way, and um, it could save you some money. Because um, I've seen this problem happen before. Uh, and it's this way in a lot of Asian cars as well. Um, so this particular uh, car, uh, the history on it, it's a 1992 Ford F-250 Super Duty. It's a wrecker, um, tow truck, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it just quit charging one day. Um, they replaced the alternator. They replaced the voltage regulator. They tried to inspect as much of the wiring harness as possible um, and then ohmed everything out, taped it back up. The wires were fine. Um, still wouldn't charge. And they noticed that if they took a uh, paper clip and shorted between this battery post on the alternator and this F post, the orange wire, it would, it would charge. Take the paper clip out and it doesn't charge. So, uh, what's the problem here? Um, so, for those of you that have been doing this a while, you're going to know right away it's got a blown charge indicator lamp or a problem in that circuit. But a lot of people don't realize that on many cars, the charge indicator bulb is actually a critical part of what energizes the fields. Um, on an alternator um, and some cars will energize the field directly off of that bulb some cars will send a signal to the regulator so in this case if we look we have the ignition switch up here we turn it on it sends voltage down here to this charge indicator bulb and this resistor that's in parallel to it um, I imagine that is to keep the load balanced so that uh, there's some small amount of current that flows to the voltage regulator, but they want to keep that balanced so that it doesn't light the bulb at all um, for that small load until the load gets higher. Um, but anyway, um, that provides voltage then down to this I connection. The I connection on here stands for instrumentation right and so that's for the instrument cluster the instrument bulb um, and so uh, the voltage regulator uses that to say hey the ignition's on I need to start uh, energizing the field so that this guy will charge it will not energize the fields if this signal is not present because that would cause a parasitic draw on the battery and run the battery down so it has a couple of you know a couple of connections or three connections to the alternator um, this s uh, on ford that is for your stator pulse uh, i think some other cars that's a sense so the the difference usually between sense and stator pulse you know i say usually because it can be a lot of different uh terminal types and connections on alternators from different makes and models but usually sense is just sensing that it's turning um, where stator pulse is determining how fast it's turning as well um, and then it's got this switch here and it's going to flip that switch and it's going to leave it closed more often when it wants more power out of the alternator and it'll leave it closed less often open more often when it doesn't need very much power and open all the time if it needs none. So that's kind of like a duty cycle uh, where that's going to be flipping back and forth and keeping the uh, field intermittently charged as necessary. <coughs> and then of course it's got a connection to the main battery positive so that it knows what the voltage is. Um, and also probably powers the circuit. Um, and so it's going to, um, you know, that comes off of the fields, right? Or off of the stator, I'm sorry, um, for the stator pulse. And then this comes 
and charges the field. And then when there's a magnetic field here, this stator turning inside of it generates alternating currents, which goes through this, these uh, diodes, which then makes sure that only direct current is leaving the alternator to go up and charge the battery. So that's how that circuit works. If you run into a case where a car's not charging, even if you, you can pull up a diagram real quick and look, but even if you don't, kick the key on, but don't start the ignition. Just put it in the run position and see if you have a battery light. If you don't have a battery light, you might want to check and see if the bulb is blown. Um, or then at least pull up a wiring diagram and see if that's a critical part of the circuit. Newer cars are getting more and more different all the time, but there's a lot of cars, especially older ones, where the charge indicator bulb is a critical part of the charging circuit. So you don't want to run out and buy alternators and voltage regulators and start looking at wiring and maybe most people usually get a battery too when they have a charging problem, right? And then you've got hundreds of dollars invested when what you needed was like a one dollar light bulb. Okay, I hope this helps someone especially if you're working on an older Ford. This might explain how this system works. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.